Hi Nora, my name is Gabby. Um, I'm 20 years old and I am a global affairs student at George Mason. And um, I really liked your question about Zainab Salvi. I think it's amazing that you're um, doing a paper about her. She's actually a George Mason alumni, so um, we hold some special ties to her alumni. And I think it's great that you uh, decided to ask about her, of all people. Um, well, just to give you a little bit of background about her, she was born in 1970 uh, in Baghdad, Iraq. Um, and so that makes her Iraqi American. And um, actually, her dad was uh, a personal pilot for the dictator of. Saddam Hussein, um, and so for her experiences living under his tyranny and just um, the day-to-day -day life that she lived uh, under scrutiny, um, being so close to Saddam Hussein, really affected her and impacted what she wanted to do and help her decide that she wanted to be a peace activist. Um, she ended up co-founding an organization for peace activism called Women for Women International. It's actually based out of Washington, D.C., and um, she served as the CEO of this organization um, from its founding all the way up until last year. Um, and it's a grassroots humanitarian and development organization, and it helps women survivors specifically of wars and just general conflict help to rebuild their lives. Um, she first started it out as a simple correspondence between U.S. women and women from Yugoslavia, um, and then these letters between the two women uh, helped them recover from the death of loved ones and just the, um, the ravished lifestyle that they had lived in concentration camps during the Yugoslavic conflict. Um, but since those first letters, her efforts to help women uh, ravaged by war have grown and um, eventually she formed Women for Women International. And um, she did this in 1993. Um, and it has supported women survivors of war uh, in Bosnia, uh, Rwanda, Kosovo, Nigeria, Colombia, Afghanistan, Iraq, um, the Democratic Republic of Congo, and Sudan. Um, the organization has helped 3,000, no, 316,000 women survivors of war access social and economic opportunities through. Um, a program of rights awareness, uh, training, vocational skills education, that's like um, learning basic stuff to get um, jobs, and access to income generating opportunities, um, such as getting loans out of the bank and whatnot that they wouldn't typically be able to do. And these types of loans are called microloans. Um, they're just small scale loans uh, to help people who can't generally um, get access to loans or money from the bank. And um, this ultimately contributed to the political and economic health of their community. So um, while Zainab Salvi can't actually affect negative peace, which is the absence of war direct violence, she can play an effect on promoting positive peace within these communities by um, helping women to um, just try to uphold economic and political justice in their communities and um, she is a, a fighter for economic and social justice um, throughout the world in places that she thinks really need it and these are usually war-torn communities um, specifically through women because um, women are generally the caretakers of the family and so by accessing women and empowering women um, she tries to help them create the cycle of um, peace in what is normally a vicious cycle of violence within the community. Um, and by doing this, she attempts to deter um, children from acts of resentment and um, attempts to become ch children soldiers. And that ends up playing a big part in um, their own homestead education, which also plays a big part in um, the promotion of violence or possibly the promotion of peace, which is what she's trying to do with her work and through this organization. Um, and in the 18 years that it's been uh, started since 1993, um, the organization has distributed more than 
a uh, hundred and three million dollars in direct aid. <laughs> sorry, direct aid, microcredit loans, and has impacted more than um, one point seven million family members. So by gaining access to the women, she's also trying to promote peace indirectly with their families. Um, they have trained thousands of women in rights awareness and helped thousands more start their own small businesses through microloans. Um, and her organization has gotten many awards um, since its foundation. Um, some that you might know would be like Time Magazine. It's a pretty popular magazine. Um, she was nominated Innovator of the Month for her work as a philanthropist. Um, she was honored by President Clinton um, for her humanitarian work, um, by Harper's Bazaar, Forbes Magazine, um, and a couple other groups. Um, she's also written two books, one in 2005, which is called Between Two Worlds, Escape from Tyranny, Growing Up in the Shadow of Saddam, and um, that's actually a memoir of her life, um, from Saddam Hussein to her arranged marriage that her mother actually prepared for her, which was an attempt to get married um, and live in the U.S. out of harm's way of Saddam Hussein in Iraq. Um, but that ended up not being um, successful for her. And then uh, her second book in 2006 she published. It uh, was published actually by the National Geographic and um, has won multiple awards. It's called The Other Side of War, Women's Stories of Survival and Hope. And this is kind of like um, uh, chronal like um, chronicles the organization's work and um, has definitely gained success in the past 18 years. Um, and if you want to know more about Zainab Salbi, there's a good PBS special. Um, they have a series called Women, War, and Peace, and she's featured in a specific episode called War Redefined. You can find the full episode with her interview on the PBS website. I hope that I've helped you out, and I hope that your paper goes well, um, and that you learned a little bit more. And I was just wondering why you specifically chose her, and um, if you wanted to have any sort of career aspirations in the future similar to hers. Bye.